Thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're really happy to see so many people here today. Um, today, what we're going to talk through a little bit is about the Microsoft program offers, all of the different solutions that they have available for nonprofits. And what we're particularly gonna focus on for a little bit of time is some of the changes that are upcoming, particularly changes that are going to be upcoming in the next set weeks, as well as some changes that are going to be coming to follow. Uh, we know that the end of the year is often a busy time period for many nonprofits, so we really appreciate you coming here and uh, learning more from each other and us. Um, I will say that we have a really big crowd today, so we are going to do our absolute best to answer as many questions as possible, and we will be spending most of our time today going through questions. But there are a few key features that I'll just suggest again, as Aretha said, there's a Q&A tab where you can ask your questions. But if you see somebody who's already asked a question that you um, also want the answer to, there's a little um, uh, like a Facebook kind of like thumbs up. If you click on that, we'll get a little bit understanding of how many people actually need this question answered. And it makes us a little bit smarter about how to prioritize some of the questions people have. So feel free to upvote there and we will try to get to everything that we can. If we cannot get your to your question today, there's nothing to fear. We are still here. On each of these slides, you will see an email address um, that um, allows you to just email me, our team, so that we can help you answer your question if we don't get to it today. And as we mentioned, all of these materials will be sent to you. Um, part of the slides that we have as well includes references to lots of articles and um, you know, blogs that we've put together that answer some of these questions as well. So um, without further ado, let me get started. So what we wanted to talk a little bit about today is um, what TechSoup is and how we can help you, uh, particularly as you navigate some of the Microsoft changes that are upcoming. But I'm sure as many of you know who we are, um, but for those of you who might not be as familiar, TechSoup is a global nonprofit ourselves. Um, our mission is to connect charities around the world with access to technology and the skills and the support in order to use them effectively to support your own missions. So we offer software and hardware, we have courses, we have uh, IT consultations, we also have support services. So if you don't have the skills or skill sets, you can work with us to help you get what you need. We work in partnership with um, foundations, with corporations, and so we have many, many offers that are available to the nonprofit sector. Today, we're gonna be focusing on Microsoft, but there are plenty of offers available if you're looking for other solutions or other products as well. Um, what we talk about today and what we will talk about are many different types of Microsoft solutions, but that's really uh, reflective of everything that's in the TechSoup marketplace. We have solutions for wherever you are technolo technologically. So that includes desktop and hardware and installed software or cloud-based solutions and support services to help you manage that. What we're gonna focus our time on today is a little bit more about the Microsoft offers and make sure that we have a good understanding of what's available to the nonprofit sector and what might be changing as well. So the first thing I wanted to start with is a little bit of just terminology because there are so many things that are out there and Microsoft has been a partner of TechSoup's for over 20 years and they've been a really strong and amazing uh, partner in terms of their commitment to the nonprofit sector. Um, Microsoft makes available to nonprofits both on-premises and cloud solutions. And the difference between those two um, are, you know, a little bit confusing with the names itself. So I just wanted to spend a couple of seconds on that itself because we use that language in some of the changes that we're going to be talking about as well. So the on-premises solutions are solutions that you're downloading. They are desktop-based licenses or device-based licenses. So those are the licenses that you might get, like an Office 2021, that you would install on your desktop or on your laptop. Um, some of the advantages there is that it's a one-time expense um, and that Traditionally, um, with the donations, you've been getting a mic uh, Microsoft Software Assurance that allows you to have upgrades for up to two years as well. But some of the disadvantages are it is um, something that is on your desktop only, so you don't necessarily get all of the great features of cloud computing and cloud storage, and you don't get all of the updates um, because it's just kind of a standalone software. 
And you're also responsible then for making sure that your systems are staying up to date in case there are security patches or things like that that are happening. Um, we also offer cloud solutions, and that's a, a big kind of offering from Microsoft and really where a lot of the innovation, um, the new security features, the new resiliency features are coming in. And some of the advantage, advantages of cloud solutions is that the costs can be spread out over time. There are many cloud solutions that are also fully donated by Microsoft as well. Um, they are automatically updated. So as software features are released, that will automatically get pushed to you. You're not going to need to have to create new versions or get a new version when something comes out. Those are just going to automatically be updated. And you don't require the same kind of server hardware or software maintenance that you would in an on-premise solution. The other thing that I like to call out too is the difference between a device-based license and a user-based license. So in cloud licensing, that cloud license is based off of a user themselves. So for me particularly, I use about four devices. I use a laptop, I use a desktop, and I use my mobile device, and sometimes I use my tablet. So um, depending on how on the go you are, it's really helpful to be able to not have to have a license for each one of those products. Um, or devices that I use. Instead, I have a user-based account. I can just log on to anywhere and get access to all of my files. So um, one of the disadvantages there, though, is it, you know, for you to use all of the robust features of a cloud solution, you will need um, some stable internet connectivity. Um, that's not always the case. We know across America or in rural areas or even in certain locations. I'm hoping my internet connectivity is gonna work for us today. Um, but one of the things I'll also point out there is there are many cloud solutions that have desktop um, applications, so you don't always need to be online to use them. But in order to get some of those features like collaboration or um, the updates that we were talking about, you would need to have an internet connection. So right now, um, what's available today for nonprofits include uh, products and solutions in both of those areas, both on-premises and cloud. So on the on-premises side, um, we have both donation offers that are fully donated by Microsoft and usually are standard level products that are best suited for smaller organizations. There are a cap of about 50 licenses um, per product. And um, these right now come with software assurance. Um, there is a small TechSoup administrative fee that goes to helping us run these programs and um, run programs like this, um, but otherwise it's fully donated by Microsoft. There are also discounted offers available, so for many other products that might not be available through donation. Um, those are typically still available at a really significant discount for 60 to 75% off of commercial pricing. Um, they have um, both professional level products as well as the standard level products, and it, you can choose whether or not you want software assurance or not. On the cloud side, there are both donated and discounted offers available, and there are so many different great solutions that are available on the cloud side, and I'll talk a little bit more about that licensing in a few minutes, um, but there are different ways, and one of the greatest things about the cloud licensing is you can pick and choose. So if you have some people in your team that need volunteer licenses and only need certain applications, you can just get that for them. If you have people who are serving IT functions and need more security features, you can get a higher level license licensing for them, but you can really mix and match based off of the solution needs that your team really needs. So what we wanted to talk a little bit more about today is the program changes that we're going to be expecting. And so there are a few changes that are happening in the Microsoft program offerings, some of which are going to be happening in the next few weeks. And these are kind of uh, the reasons for some of these changes are happening that are uh, level changes that are happening at Microsoft that affect some of the program offerings that are happening. So the first one is um, some fulfillment and licensing changes that Microsoft is making to really consolidate their offers and have more um, of a centralized way of delivering technology solutions to everybody around the world. Um, and some of them are particular to make sure that Microsoft is able to focus their donation strategy um, based off of where they know that the um, innovation and their efforts are being in cloud solutions as well. So I'll talk a little bit more about some of the impacts that means for us. 
So in terms of the changes for organizations, one of the big changes is going to be how we request products. So right now, when you are requesting a Microsoft donation product, for the most part, you're coming to TechSoup, you're adding it to your cart, and you're gonna be able to go to the Volume Licensing Center to download your license. That will change. Um, so what will happen now is that in order to request any Microsoft donation or any Microsoft solution that's available for nonprofits, organizations um, can come to TechSoup and request the product, but before we're able to fulfill that product, we're going to need um, organizations to have to create a Microsoft account and make sure that Microsoft account is valid for a charity offer. And so that happens, and many of you may have already gone through that process. If you have an Office 365 account, you've already done this, so this is not anything new, and you won't have to do it again. Um, but you also have to make sure that you have that account set up, and I'll explain a little bit more why in a second. And also provide consent to make sure that you're comfortable with TechSoup actually providing you that software moving forward. The second part that's changing is there's a new process to download those on-premises Microsoft products. So where we've typically gone to the VLSC, the Volume Licensing Center, to actually get and download your products, now all of your products will be available through the Microsoft 365 administrative portal. And that's kind of why you need to create your account in the first step to make sure that we know exactly where to send those licenses to you. So organizations will be able to see the licenses they download in that one centralized portal. And they will have, um, you'll have five days to actually download that software and um, be able to kind of see all of the software that you have. So if you have cloud licenses and you have on-premises licenses, you'll see that in your administrative portal. Um, I know one of the questions that keeps coming up is also what happens to your older licenses that you may have requested. All of the older licenses you can still access in the Volume Licensing Center. This is really a change that's impacting, impacting licenses that you are going to purchase, so for future things. Um, and then one other change in terms of what is going to be available is um, right now on our don download, downloaded donated products, um, you're usually able to select the version that you want. So if you go in right now and select Office 2021 as the product that you're requesting, when you go into the VLSC, you might be able to downgrade that version to a different version um, or an older version of the product. Um, as we move to the new fulfillment kind of me mechanism that Microsoft has, donations will only be available for the latest versions of products. So right now, what will be donated starting in January will actually be the Office 2021 version, but the goal is to get access and get donations for the latest and greatest of the solutions that are available, and that will be what will um, be able to be provided as a donation. The last thing I wanted to also update on is software assurance. So software assurance is a benefit that has been traditionally provided for some of the on-premises donation products. Um, software assurance usually provides you about a two-year window in which if another product update comes, you can upgrade for free. Um, as we move to a licensing platform where things are more regularly updated all the time, software assurance is no longer going to be offered as a standard with the donated on-premises products. So starting in January, as you request products and if you request donations, um, those products will no longer have that software assurance benefit. Um, but there are many other benefits that you'll be able to see and, and um, be able to exercise. And I promise we we're going to stop for lots of questions because I know I'm throwing a lot of information out. Um, and as I mentioned, all of these will be available to you after this um, webinar as well. The other area that I wanted to call out very specifically is um, some of the things that might impact your year end plans. As we mentioned before, we know that many organizations have um, their uh, calendar year coincide with their fiscal year and as you're thinking about planning for next year we wanted you to be aware that there are a few products that are actually no longer going to be available um, after this year uh, this calendar year the products um, on that list include windows pro full operating system which is a get genuine license um, that is a full operating system license windows upgrades will still be available um, microsoft access 
Visual Studio Test Professional, Windows Server Essential, and some Dynamics licenses as well. I wanted to point out that all of these products, though they might not be available as an on-premises donation, um, everything with an asterisk next to it is going to be available through cloud offers and many through cloud donations. So Microsoft Access is available in the Microsoft 365 donation offer that is made available to organizations. Um, same with Windows Server Essential. Dynamics licenses are already included in the cloud versions of the Dynamics products. And if you um, need the on-premises versions, we will still be able to offer those at a discount starting in January with software assurance as well. So um, I wanted to flag this obviously because um, it is information that will impact and may impact your organization if you're thinking about needing or you're thinking about requesting any of these licenses, that there is um, a certain time window that is available left for these products. And just to make sure everybody is clear on what these dates are. So the, the key dates that I want everybody to remember is really the 29th of December is a, is a big one um, and the 13th of December. So if your nonprofit is thinking about making um, year end kind of allotments for the next year, or you're thinking about what your IT budget is looking for next year, we want you to be aware of some of these changes that are happening. So in order for us to be able to make all of the changes that we need to in our systems to be able to talk and make sure that we're fulfilling the correctly with Microsoft starting in January when they make a series of changes, we actually unfortunately need to take some of our products offline for a bit and make sure that we can remap them to the new product fulfillment process that Microsoft is going to be enacting. So in order to do that, December 13th is going to be the last date that we have available for discounted on premises products. Those really include those products on our catalog that actually have a tag that says discount. Um, and the key products that we see requested there are really server, user, and device Cal licenses. For the vast majority of all of the products that we offer, you will still be able to um, request those until December 29th. Um, those will include all of our donated on-premises offers. They will be offline and out of stock from a period of December 30th to January 4th. So um, after January 4th, you'll come back in and you'll um, have to do some of those changes and updates that we mentioned, but you'll still be able to get all of the products that you need. But there is a window and period of time where we'll have those offline. The one thing I also wanted to mention is that these changes are really only impacting the on-premises download device-based licensing. So if you at this time need another Office 365 license, or if you'd like to start um, and uh, request a new subscription to Microsoft 365 licenses, all of the cloud solutions and products will remain available during this time period, and there's no impact to those at all. webinars we've talked a little bit about as well um, has been the changes that are going to happen after April 4th. So the changes I talked about right now really are happening over the next few weeks. They're really centralized and talking about fulfillment changes and changes that are going to be impacted based off of a new licensing way and distribution channel that we have to provide licenses to organizations. The, the second change that's really gonna be happening in April, so this is something a little further away, but something that's probably important for you to understand when you're thinking about your own IT plans and thinking about what you might need for your organization um, as you think about the next year, um, is that the products that are going to be available for um, those device-based on-premises licenses that are currently available as a donation, most of those are going to be moving to a discounted offer. Um, Throughout that process, Microsoft is still going to have most of that functionality still available as a donation through their cloud offers. Um, but there are few um, products that will um, be moving then to a discounted offer. The details here are on the slide, you can come back to it. Um, but the focus here is really to make sure that you're aware that that's upcoming and that is happening as you're thinking about your planning for the next year. 
So before we get into questions, I really wanted to quickly just talk a little bit about the different cloud offers that are available from Microsoft. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate again, there are no changes to this. So this exists today, this will exist tomorrow, this will exist in January and in April as well. So um, the first one is the Microsoft 365 Business Basic Solution. This is available as a donation to all nonprofits. You can have up to 300 users here. It desktop application. So in order to use it, you're going to need an internet connection. But it will include Exchange, Teams, SharePoint, all of the Office applications that you might need, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneDrive for storage. Um, Microsoft also makes available um, the Microsoft 365 Business Standard offer. That's basically the same licenses that we just talked about, same applications that we just talked about, except it also includes desktop applications. So you can actually download it and use all of these programs offline. And it also includes Outlook, Publisher, and Access. We can also see um, the Microsoft 365 Business Premium License. Business Premium Licenses are a fantastic offer. I think it's one of Microsoft's best offers to the nonprofit sector uh, because it's free for up to 10 users. It um, includes all of the desktop applications, includes cloud-based applications, and it includes additional security features as well. So I always find this to be an incredibly um, compelling offer for the nonprofit sector. I think that for um, many of us, um, particularly if we have smaller organizations, this licensing will cover most of our needs. Um, and it also offers some additional features like security management that is really great. Microsoft also makes available the Office 365 licensing. The real distinguishing between like Microsoft 365 and Office 365 is really um, Microsoft 365 is meant for users for under 300. Microsoft Office 365, sorry, is usually meant for organizations that are enterprise, which is where the E comes from in all of these licensing, so over 300. But a lot of the functionality is very similar. Um, and it has different offerings available as well. All of these are available as discounted licenses. So the donation offers are really happening on the Microsoft 365 ones. So I know I went through a lot. Um, I'm happy to go through questions. I know that we've had a lot of questions come up to us um, beforehand. So I wanted to make sure that we covered some of them really quickly before we got into some of the new questions. The first one was, what does this mean for your existing licenses? So um, this will not, any of these changes are not going to impact your ability to use your existing licenses in any way. So if you have an on-premise license today that you're still using, those are perpetual licenses. You will continue to be able to use that. Your software assurance benefits will last and will be honored for as long as that contract term lasts as well. These licensing changes and the changes that we talked about will also not impact any of your current cloud licenses. Nothing is changing in terms of what cloud products are available to the nonprofit sector, and those are not going to be updated or changed during this time period. One of the other questions that we get a lot is, what if you don't have dependable internet connectivity and it doesn't make sense for you to use a cloud-based license? I totally understand, and we totally understand that you know, connectivity is not a reality for everybody. So um, the one thing I would mention is on-premises solutions are still going to be available um, for the nonprofit sector. Um, they will be available, and if they are not available as a donation, they will be available as a discounted offer. And many of the cloud subscriptions, including the Microsoft 365 um, business premium and business standard license include desktop applications. So you do not always have to be online in order to leverage and use those um, tools. Um, the last one I just wanted to quickly mention was how are libraries impacted? We had a few webinars before. Um, there have been a little bit more, um, I would say, confusion about libraries because libraries in general um, have traditionally been served by Microsoft in the education sector. 
um, we have been able to provide um, public access computing needs through the charitable offers. Um, but as some of these program changes roll in, um, libraries are going to be differently impacted. So I would just suggest here that um, we are going to do a dedicated webinar on Thursday for libraries in general. We'll also have somebody from Microsoft on the line to talk a little bit about the Microsoft education sector and some of those offers. But the big takeaway here is that libraries um, will only be able to request those on-premises donations until December 29th um, of this year. After that period of time, we'll talk about the other offers that are going to be available to libraries, but it will not be, unfortunately, charitable donations. Um, they will be academic offers and heavily discounted to make sure the impact is small, um, but it will be a little bit different for libraries. So I am going to pause here. I know I've been talking for a while. I'm going to continue talking and trying to answer all of your questions next. So I'm going to go to our questions for a little and see um, how we can get started on those. Um, so the first question we have is from Howard, and it looks like um, his question is, strategically, this looks like Microsoft is deprioritizing the tech soup relationship and quality and range of offerings. This, that is, is this a reasonable interpretation of the change in their direction? Cloud-based software is an issue due to data security with our data offsite, and we do not consider this an option for us. Thanks, Howard, for that question. And hopefully you guys can still hear me and see me. Um, I just got a little notification that my um, chat was, uh, my connectivity was unstable. So I understand not being able to always have um, stable internet connection. But I don't think that this is necessarily a indication from Microsoft uh, that they are deprioritizing the tech soup relationship. I will say Microsoft believes really strongly that um, the cloud solutions are the right solutions in the long term for many nonprofits. We know, obviously, that that's not always the reality, and many people have very legitimate reasons for not moving to cloud solutions in the same way. Um, whatever solutions that they do have available that are on-premises solutions are still going to be made available and with a 60 to 75 percent discount. And I would say that we are still working really closely with Microsoft be able to provide these offers to the sector. Um, we've been working with Microsoft for many decades, and I think we'll continue to do so and partner as effectively as possible to make sure that these offers are available, advocate for what's working and what the needs are for the sector. But really, our goal here is to make sure all of the nonprofits that we support have access to the technology solutions that they need. And um, all of these solutions that I talked about, both the cloud, on-premises, all can be um, provided and um, distributed through TechSoup. And we hope that you do choose TechSoup to do that because we're here to help and we want to be able to learn from you and learn what we can do to better um, operate and help you adopt some of these solutions as well. I hope that answers that, um, Howard. Um, Kaylee asks, it used to be that we could get the Microsoft products like Microsoft Azure directly from TechSoup. Now it appears we need to go through a Microsoft contracted company, which puts another layer of communication that impedes quick access. Will that change? We are really hoping that that is going to change a little bit more, Kaylee, to make that a little bit easier so that you don't have to go to multiple people to get what you need. Right now, Microsoft Azure, unfortunately, is um, Microsoft offers a $3,500 credit every year for Azure offerings. And so in order to get that credit, um, you do have to directly go to Microsoft to get that. Um, they're working on solutions to allow other people to be able to provide that directly to organizations, including TechSoup. So we're hoping that we'll be able to make that smoother. And as we mentioned before, um, you can get any Office 365 or Microsoft 365 or cloud solution or cloud product um, directly from TechSoup as well. So we are here to try to help you and be that one-stop shop for you to get all of your technology needs, Microsoft or not Microsoft. So we hope that um, you can continue to come to TechSoup for that. And we'll continue to partner with Microsoft to make sure that we can directly serve and provide all of those offers directly to make that a little bit less burdensome for everybody else. Um, Kaylee also asks, um, why do nonprofits have to go through a third party for Microsoft products? Will that change? It, does, it impedes access. Um, I think that's similar, and sorry, I think I answered a little bit of that. Um, but um, 
right now, Microsoft does have some direct products available, and they also leverage um, other people like TechSoup to be able to offer those. And I think the goal there is that you know when somebody like TechSoup can help offer those solutions to you, hopefully we can offer some of the information and access and help and tips of what solution might be right for you and actually support you in that deployment and management of the solutions. So we're hoping that we definitely don't impede the access. That's definitely not what we want to do, particularly at TechSoup. Um, our goal is to make it easy and have a one-stop shop for you. So I think over time, um, though you have to get a registered Microsoft account um, so that we can distribute those licenses directly to you, um, hopefully you can get everything that you need at one provider like TechSoup. Um, Mike asks, can Microsoft accounts with an EDU domain from an educational, can, can Microsoft accounts be with an EDU domain um, from an educational source? So Mike, there are some nonprofits that have um, the ability to be both counted as nonprofit or education. Unfortunately, um, the way it works is I believe you have to choose which one you want. Um, so you can either choose to get educational offers or you can choose to get um, nonprofit offers. And that might be dependent on exactly kind of the solutions you need for your organization and what works well. Education licensing does have different licensing in general and particularly certain products that are made um, and suited for an education um, or academic setting. So it is a possibility that you might be eligible for both, but unfortunately you can only transact and get licenses for one of those um, areas. Um, Steve asks, what happens if you need to rebuild a machine after five days? Um, and I think this is um, particularly in regards to the um, change that we had talked about, where we said that the link is only available for five days. Um, if that happens, um, you can ask TechSoup to regenerate that link for you. And um, we will be able to regenerate uh, that link. It'll just be um, something you have to call us and escalate to us, and then we can regenerate that link for you. Um, from Wine Pine, White Pine County Library, um, is there a fee to set up on the Microsoft nonprofit portal? No, there's no fee to set up um, your licensing or your account with Microsoft. That's completely free. You can go to Microsoft directly and set up a free account there. Um, and uh, if you do that with or through TechSoup, there's no fee on that as well. So um, getting access to the licenses have no uh, fee at all and getting validated and all of that, um, that's not changing in terms of having to have a fee associated with it. Karen Hunter says, um, writing a grant proposal. As I wait for the timeframes of various grants, I'm putting down prices using TechSoup products. Is this okay to wait for the grant approval to price TechSoup? Am I doing this correctly? It's helpful to understand the uh, Microsoft product requests for donations. That's exactly, Karen, exactly what we envisioned would be happening at this time period and why we wanted to come together and make sure that you were aware of some of these changes. Um, I would definitely suggest if you want to um, email us at reachus.techsoup.org, we're happy to go through the specific products that you're putting in there to see if there's going to be any changes. But I would really, um, the prices that we have in there right now are probably um, good for you to think about in your grant proposal. I would just call out specifically if there are products you know are on the list that are going to change specifically that we talked about, that you might want to flag that as different. And um, like I said, please feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to help on that as well. Okay, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Jaina, it's a really pretty name. Um, is the five day limit applicable to the first download only? If I'm getting several licenses that I need to distribute to multiple remote staff, not sure five days will be long enough to complete. We totally uh, appreciate that and understand that. And I um, think that that's one of the reasons we wanted to call that out specifically because we know that that's usually not gonna be enough time for everybody. Um, as I mentioned before, I think it is applicable um, to the first download only. Um, but um, if there is a need to regenerate that link, you can always call TechSoup and we can regenerate that link for you as well. Um, I think the other question here is from um, Kaylee. Will Microsoft offer the Microsoft Azure for a more affordable price to nonprofits? That's a great question and something that I can definitely um, raise and talk to with Microsoft Teams as well. Right now, what Microsoft offers is a pretty generous uh, grant on a year-over-year -year basis. So every year, um, eligible nonprofits 
um, can get up to $3,500 in grant credits that go towards Azure. And there are a lot of Azure services that are embedded in some of the cloud solutions that you can always access as well. So that's what we know of right now. I'm not sure if there's any plans to change that offering, um, but Kaylee, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to email us and we're happy to kind of advocate on your behalf as well. Um, Steve asks, once we get 2022, will we again be able to order on-prem server and user cows? Um, on-prem server and user cows will still be available for nonprofits, depending on the exact um, server you're talking about. I'm assuming Windows Server. Um, Windows Server will still be uh, available for nonprofits as a donation until April, and then after April, it will still be available, but as a discount. Again, those discounts are about 60 to 75% off of the commercial or retail pricing. Um, so it's still a significant donation. Um, or still a significant discount, excuse me, um, and they will still be available to us and to the sector. It's just going to be at a little bit different of a cost. Uh, Nancy asks, are there changes deadlines only for Microsoft products? What about QuickBooks and other TechSoup products? That's a really good question, Nancy. The um, dates that I had provided about out of stock are only for Microsoft on-premises offers. So this does not impact any other products on the TechSoup product um, uh, marketplace. There are, um, you can still get QuickBooks licenses. You can still get all of the other products you need. You can even still get all of the cloud Microsoft licenses you need. So these changes are really particular to the Microsoft program on-premises download device-based licensing. Chris asks, um, the email address for our TechSoup admin account is different than the email address for the Microsoft 365 tenant account. Will this cause any issues activating donated licenses purchased by TechSoup? This is a great question, Chris. Um, so right now, the way that this works is any uh, licenses that you've purchased in the past, you will still be able to access and get that through the Volume Licensing Center as you create that new account and that we can distribute licenses directly to your Microsoft 365, those licenses will go into that portal moving forward. Um, Microsoft is also doing a process. So when you log into your volume licensing center, you might be prompted to link your work account and they are working on a process so that it makes it a little bit more seamless that you can bridge those two accounts together as well. So hopefully that's not gonna create a problem for you to get your licenses but um, there will be some opportunities for you to merge those as well. Okay. Um, the next question I have here is from David. Are there any um, changes that will impact startup nonprofit organizations? And David, that's an interesting question. I'm not entirely sure I um, fully understand it, so I apologize. Um, if um, you send us an email at reachus at techsoup.org, I am happy to try to answer that a little bit more completely and understand um, what you might mean by that and how we can help. Um, the other question from Kara is, um, will updates be offered for on-premises products that we currently have? So um, the on-premises products that you currently have, if there are security updates, if there are still patches and releases, Microsoft usually commits to supporting those products that exist already for either up to five or 10 years, just dependent on the license. So for all of those products, those same product usage rights still apply. Um, and so as long as it's within that term period, Microsoft will still support that product and provide um, any necessary updates or critical updates. Um, if you want new versions of products, you would have to request an additional version. Um, but if you're talking about security and patch updates, things like that, um, Microsoft does commit to continuing to provide updates for those. Um, Megan asks, what is the charitable discount? Um, so it ranges from product to product, but typically standard level products have a uh, discount rate of about 75% off of the commercial um, rates that products are available for. And premium products or professional products, um, those are usually about 60% off of the retail price. So that's usually where the charitable discount rates come into play for Microsoft. Um, Michael asks, can I identify TechSoup as my partner? And if so, what is the cost? 
absolutely, you can identify TechSoup as your partner. There is no cost for us to partner together. We do not charge anybody to partner with us. Um, we are here to partner and make sure that we can provide you the licenses, the solutions, the support you need. Um, and so we um, have no additional cost for us being your partner of record um, and us supporting you as either your provider, your partner, or a Microsoft language, they call it a reseller. All right, Joe asks, um, once we set up a micro admin account um, through that account or through TechSoup? So um, that's a good question because it's a little bit kind of confusing. So when you come to TechSoup and you say, I want this product or I want this license um, or I want some help here, what we can do is direct you through that process. There will be a step where you have to go directly to Microsoft and create your Microsoft account. But as soon as that account is set up, you can send us that information um, and that can happen pretty quickly. You can send us that information and say, I've created the account. Here is my domain name, That's which is what they'll ask for. And as soon as we have that, we can go ahead and go through that process. So technically it's a Microsoft account that you're creating, um, but you do that um, in partnership and through TechSoup in some ways. There'll be a few moments where you have to go to the Microsoft site to go through their process and sign um, their kind of attestations um, and uh, policies. Um, but other than that, once you provide that and once you have that created, you can send that to TechSoup and then we can create and manage the account from there on. Okay, um, Ramald asks, what details can you give us about options to keep our sensitive data secure with the shift to cloud? That is a great question and we could probably, and actually we do have webinars devoted just to that topic. Um, and so I would say, Ramald, um, I would love to reach out to you and provide you a lot more information on that, but at a very high level. Um, we have, I think there, it depends on the type of security that you're looking for and the type of, uh, backups maybe that you're looking for as well, but there are options, particularly in cloud licensing with E3 licenses, business premium licenses that come with really robust security solutions that can really help um, secure your data, secure your access and secure your devices that we would recommend. I also just wanna quickly say that we know that nonprofits can particularly vo be vulnerable to security threats and security attacks. And one thing that Microsoft has made freely available to everybody is something called Microsoft Account Card. Um, I'll put some information um, on the slide that we hand out back on this. But uh, Microsoft Account Card allows you to sign up for a service where Microsoft will um, alert you if they see activity on your account or if they see anything that's going on that seems like um, other people are trying to hack into your account as well. And so there are a lot of amazing services that are part of the cloud solutions and part of the nonprofit offering that Microsoft does make available to um, enhance and have robust security features. Um, and as I mentioned, we do have webinars and content about that, but um, that's a really, really high level answer. And I'm happy to get through in more details with that um, as well, Renault. Um, Mary asks, how do we set up a direct account with Microsoft? So if you go to microsoft.com backslash nonprofits, um, there is a get started page there and you can go there and actually create your account um, right there and it'll create an Office 365 or Microsoft 365 administrative account for you. The one thing to note is that the person who creates the account is the default um, administrator of the account. So that's something just to note and to be aware of. So if there's somebody you would want to be in the admin role, obviously once they create that role, they can set you as an admin, but as a default, the person who's creating that account becomes the administrator. Um, and like I said, if you um, want to do that through TechSoup, um, we have cloud licensing available as well. And so we can help you through that process. And one of the resources I think that we'll include here is a step-by-step -step guide on how to register on the Microsoft nonprofit portal as well. Okay. Um, Crystal asks, who do I contact regarding reviewing our account since I'm not familiar with what products we have and the changes that may or may not impact our account? Great question. Um, Crystal, you can contact us um, at reachus at techsoup.org. Um, you can um, send us a little note and we can look up your information and we can help you through and sort out exactly what changes might impact you based off of the licensing that you have. 
Steve asks, any idea what the cost will be after April 4th for office standard on premises when it goes from donation to discounted? I do have that actually. Um, let me share my screen again really quickly. And um, I do have some additional information in the slides that we have that you'll get access to that provides some additional um, resources. So uh, let's see. So particularly right now, um, you can get the Office Standard 2021 version at $52 a license um, with a max of 50 licenses. Once we move after April 4th, the discounted version will probably be around $167 for a license that's similar, so um, that has um, software assurance. So that would be the price differential between what's available as a donation and what's available as a discount. And one thing to note here, particularly with Office Standard, is that um, you can still get Office Standard applications and functionality if you want it through the Microsoft 365 Business Premium Cloud offer. And like I mentioned before, that's available as a donation, a complete donation, so zero dollars for um, up to 10 people in your staff. Okay. I hope that was helpful. And all of these slides, again, will be available to you after, so you'll be able to access them. So the next question from Ben was, will unused Windows 10 licenses, which are currently available in the Volume Licensing Center, still be there? Yes, um, the Volume Licensing Center is not going away on December 29th. It's just being reduced. And for new licenses, we're going to be starting to deliver that through the Admin Center, the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. But any existing licenses that you have, you can still go ahead and access within the Volume Licensing Center itself. Um, Matthew says, I'm guessing the five day thing doesn't actually apply to licenses we already have. We have a few licenses that haven't been used yet. That is correct. Um, these are all changes that are going to be applied moving forward for new licenses. And it's only really applicable for those licenses that are gonna be distributed in your Microsoft 365 admin portal. So for licenses that you're requesting today or that are still gonna be delivered through the Volume Licensing Center, that will still remain there and you can still access it there as well. Um, Tom J says, is there a plan to build a knowledge base or webinar for installing on-premises software? It's so much more involved for Office now. That is 1000% true. So um, we do have a few resources and I can make sure that that's available as well to help on downloading those licenses. Um, the new install methodology is a little bit confusing and can be complex. So we have some um, guides on how to do step-by-step -step instructions on how to download that. We also offer a service. Um, so we uh, work in partnership and we offer a service for organizations who need support and help to do it um, by computer or by license itself to install it on your behalf. So I can put both links in here, but we do appreciate that it's a little bit confusing and hard. So um, we have tried to create some assets to make that a little bit easier for organizations. Okay. So we have um, a few questions about libraries and I wanna make sure that I just um, also just state one more time is that we will be going over specifically the impacts to libraries, the licenses that'll be available for libraries, as well as the pricing for libraries, particularly as we look to serve not just public access computers, but all of the library's needs that'll be um, conducted on Thursday, and I think around the same time as today. Um, if you um, can't make that time for any reason, I'd suggest you still register because you will get access to the slides, you'll get access to the recording, and you'll get some more information. And then um, on, we are continuing to create content and make sure that everything that we're communicating today lives and breathes in writing so that you can come back to it. Um, we know that some of these changes are not going to really make sense until next year anyway. Um, so remember, as you think through something, you can think back to this webinar and say, oh, I remember that that was going to happen. Let's go find that information. And so we're trying to create a central repository for you to be able to get all that information together. Um, let me move on. We know we only have about 10 minutes left. Um, Kurt Rosen asked, um, do the on-premises changes apply to Mac-based um, versions as well? Great question, Kurt. And yes, um, both of those, um, uh, all of the changes apply to both the Windows and Mac versions of products. 
Um, Dave B asks, in terms of on-premises versus cloud, many of the cloud apps have a downloadable desktop app. Does that change affect the ability to run, for instance, Teams on the desktop? So when I talk about desktop applications that are built based off of the cloud licenses, those are not changing at all. The only changes that are going to be happening are for those specifically downloadable device-based licensing. If you're accessing desktop applications through your cloud license, that is not gonna shift or change at all. And you will still be able to use Teams on your desktop. You'll still be able to use OneNote, Power Apps, all of those solutions that you have right now um, and continue to use them moving forward. The changes that we're talking about are really specifically about those that you request upfront as a device-based license. And so don't actually have a cloud-based license behind it. I hope that helps. Um, Jennifer P says, we have an extremely strict confidentiality requirements by law, which is why we do not use cloud-based services. What will be our options, especially for smaller nonprofits without a large tech budget? We completely understand that, Jennifer, and I think that's a lot of um, many organizations face similar challenges working with vulnerable communities or working in um, areas and serving um, organizations or serving people who have really much stricter uh, sets of requirements. Um, On-premises licenses, like I mentioned, will still be available. It will be available as a discount, unfortunately, after April 4th, but they are still available today and they will be available to, um, from today until April 4th. Other than that short period and window of time from December 29th to January 4th, those products will still be available to you to request. After that period, there'll still be discounted products available. And if you don't feel comfortable using some of the cloud-based solutions, even the desktop applications, there's also an opportunity for us to talk about other solutions that might work for you. Maybe it's a Microsoft solution, maybe it's not, um, but we're happy to figure out and work with you to figure out how we can make sure that you can abide by all of the requirements that you have and continue to operate effectively as well. Um, Michelle asks, will we be able to purchase Microsoft 2021? Yes, you can request Microsoft Office 2021 today. Um, hopefully somebody can put that link right in chat. Um, 2021 has been available since October and is available as a donation product um, right now on the TechSoup um, website. And so you can um, get access to that immediately if you would like. Taha asks, does Office does TechSoup have Office 2019 professional discounts? We have Office 2019 standard for desktop with our Office 365 account, but we have a few users who need Professional Plus. Um, absolutely, um, Microsoft makes available the Office 2019 professional licenses or Office 2021 professional licenses as a discount. Um, those are available, so if you go to our um, techsoup.org and if you um, navigate to our uh, office products, you should be able to see that with a tag that says discounted, and you'll be able to get the professional version of the products as well. I'll also state that some of those features are also available um, in an office, actually a Microsoft 365 enterprise license, enterprise apps license. So there's a few different ways that you can solution and get that, but both of those are available through TechSoup today. All right, we have a couple of questions, I think, on um, Windows Server and Windows licensing. So um, in terms of, um, Teresa asks, for Windows 11, will that be offered as an option? So Windows 11 is, is pretty interesting as a new offer. Um, so um, right now, Windows 11 is available as an upgrade for people who already have Windows 10 licensing and who meet the hardware requirements. So um, there's some hardware requirements that are necessary to run Windows 11 really effectively. So if you go into um, your Windows uh, account and you, there is a, um, a checker, like a, pro a product, a hardware check um, that you can run to see whether or not you're eligible um, for the Windows 11 upgrade. Windows 11 upgrade is a free upgrade available to anybody who has a Windows 10 license. Um, it just is dependent on whether or not you have the hardware um, specifications that meet what you need to run it. Um, Thomas asks, will this affect, this being the changes, affect Microsoft server Cal donations, discounts, um, and how many that we can purchase in a two-year period? 
So the changes that we talked about today for um, Microsoft Windows Server CALs, um, those CALs are still available right now as both a donation for Windows Server um, user and device-based CAL, and for additional ones, you can get that um, through the discounted program. Those will remain available to organizations until April. And then after April, those will only be available as a discount. Um, so you'll continue to be able to get them. They will just be available at a slightly higher cost to um, organizations. Um, still 60 to 75% off of the retail value, but it does have a, 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 an impact in terms of your cost. Um, the two-year period is a great question. That two-year period is still in effect. So every two years, you are able to get additional licensing. After April, there's not many um, as donation, not, not as many donation offers available, but there are no quantity restrictions on the discounted licenses. So you can purchase that whenever you need, and there's no restriction in terms of um, you having to only have certain quantity restrictions on that. Um, the next question that we have is, can you upgrade um, a PC from a Windows 7 to a Windows 10 or 11 with the business premium license? And is there somewhere I can find more information on this? Um, that's a really good question, Sarah. Um, technically, as long as you have a Windows professional, um, Windows 7 or Windows 8 license, you should be able to use your Microsoft 365 business premium license to actually do that upgrade. You're eligible for that upgrade there. It is a bit of a confusing process. I'll be honest. It's not like one click and it's all done. So if you want to send us an email, um, we'd be happy to send you a little bit more information on how exactly to do that. We do have some information available to you on, on um, some of the steps that you can take. Um, or services available to help you through that as well. I know we're coming to the end. We only have a minute left. There are tons of questions that I unfortunately have not been able to get through yet. Um, I would love to spend more time doing that. And unfortunately, um, we just uh, want to be mindful of everybody's time as well. So what I would love to do is say that as much as possible, we'll try to answer questions and send those out when we send out um, some of the materials that we'll be sending out. I'll just really quickly state again that when we send out these materials, we'll also be sending this out with um, many additional resources that are gonna be available. So things that we didn't get through today, including um, how to schedule free consultations, um, courses that we have, um, articles in terms of how to actually get access to these tools and services and guides that we've created, um, as well as this email address, reach us at techsoup.org so that we can answer your question directly as well. Um, I thank you all for your participation today. I'm very sorry that we didn't get through all of the questions, but with 500 people, it's really hard to be able to get through everybody. So I really hope that this was helpful to you. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback. I'm sure in our chat, we're gonna be posting a link to that. It really helps us to know if these are valuable to you. Um, so, and I see a couple of questions in here about the utilization requirement. Um, there are slides in here specifically about that. And we actually published a blog and a user guide specifically on that. So there are areas that you can go to and get access to more information there. And as I mentioned multiple times, please email us. We know we didn't get to everything today, but we wanna be here to help you. Um, so uh, thank you again for all of your time. And we really, really, really appreciate your partnership and uh, good luck for the rest of the year. And we hope you have a wonderful holiday season coming up as well.